Hello, Hassel from Hassel Reviews here, and well, let's get started. So I wouldn't really call this a review, more like I'm revisiting a review. I mean, as you know, at the end of last year when I was released in fear, originally released in fear, I reviewed Spider-Man No Way Home, and I really liked it, like a lot of people. I thought it was definitely the best live-action Spider-Man movie by far. I even probably think it's a bit of an Into the Spider-Verse. Of course, of course we don't know how the... The spite of her sequel fair next year, but we'll never we'll have to wait and see till next year how that fares. But with that said, why am I talking about it again? Well, just recently the the more fun stuff edition was released, which adds more stuff, more scenes to the film, which you know hope, hopefully to you know, brighten things up as well as giving us a brand new poster with every character. Pretty much reveal although technically dark arcs tentacles are, are the only representative of him there but you know I mean, you know basically every character's represented in the poster now which is good so you do get to see toby mcguire and andrew garfield in the poster but that's not really the main thing what is in this is new scenes that got cut from the original film that were re now been released in, with this new version and i think it's worth a little talk about it because there is some I just wanted to, you know, discuss it. So I saw the the more fun stuff edition last last week, and I've been, you know, thinking about it, about what I thought of this of the new things that they added. So, but first things first, I still should say it is still the same film. So I'm not changing my score with my original score, which was 9.5 out of 10 has stars. But I will talk a bit about the stuff they've added in it for this extended cut. Well, the first new scene they added was something I've been really hoping to see, and that was... So apparently they shot a, a scene where Spider-Man was to catch a bandit after, getting, after he gets ousted. And that um, bandit just happens to be played by Tom Holland's um, br own brother, Harry Holland. So, and this was cut um, um, from the original film. And honestly, I really think it should have been in the, ori the original film because just... Because this shows how Spider-Man's suit actually gets wrecked. I mean, I know it's briefly showed it of how it gets a uh, paint paint splattered on it in the in the original cut, but um, I don't know. I feel like the scene should have stayed in it. You know, it just just it feels right. It should be there. Um, the next scene that we get, the next is more is more of Peter in high school after he returns after being out after his secret identity is revealed. Where he gets peer pressure into climbing walls, um, having to, having to hear how you know his clock, yeah, his his fellow students either praise him or loathe him. Even watching an interview that Ned's old um, girl, Ned's ex girlfriend Betty Brant, who is also who, if you know, in the Deadly Bugle web series, works for J. Jonas, J. Jonah Jameson conducting an interview with everyone, including himself. And this is probably one of the scenes I wish they didn't do. I mean, this is a deleted scene. I, and it just and it feels like it should be deleted. I mean, I can understand showing a bit more of Parker, um, how his school life has been affected, but, yeah, I don't know, you could have cut. I can understand why I got cut, you know? It's just, yeah, it doesn't always have to be that way. The next cut scene, sort of, is when Peter is when you know Peter Parker and Stephen Stranger can first trying to conduct the spell, but Peter keeps screwing things up, and that's as soon as the um, the dimensions uh, as soon as the str the spell goes wrong, we do see a bit of the acolytes who are cleaning the Sanctum Sanctorum from the wet from the snowstorm that came through, them feeling something and wondering what what's going on, and. Uh, I don't mind it. I don't mind that they added in. Small, brief, it's fine. The next new scene is where's is when Ned and MJ and Peter start trying to track down other people who have all the um people who've come through the multiverse. And they start playing the monster mash and uh, I don't know. I don't if that, if that is a new scene, just just point it out to me, but um I don't know, it just felt new new to me and I can understand if it did, was cut. Uh, the next new moment that we get is actually with J. Jonah Jameson. Um, what they do, if you remember, there's been a few... Uh, uh, there was a cut scene 
of one of Jameson interviewing someone who witnessed Parker's uh, Spider-Man's fight with um, Sam Man and Electro in the in the forest, and that apparently leads into when he gets contacted by his informant where 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 Peter is with with Aunt May dropping Norman Osborn off at the Sanctum Sanctorum. So that was actually a scene I wish could have been in the in the original cuts, and I I kind of like it, you know. If that's how it was originally meant to be, then you know, keep it the way it is. You know, I thought it was pretty good. Um, the next thing we see is is Matt Murdock actually representing Happy Hogan in court, which you know I I love Daredevil, you know, so it's good to see him still around and Charlie Cox helping out John Favreau, you know, that's that's cool and it does show how Happy finds out about um, Sam Sandman, Electro, Doc Ock, and and Green Goblin coming into his apartment with the help of Peter and Aunt May. So yeah, that's um that was good context. We should have kept that in the original cut. Um, the next scene. Now, now the final thing that gets introduced, uh, other than the post credit scene, this is the final new scene that's introduced in the main in the film. Is it shows um, uh, Peter, uh, Tom Holland, Tobey Maguire, and Andrew Garfield a little bit more time with them together, interacting with each other. And the first thing I thought was the sci them developing the cures in the science lab. That's actually not the case. Instead, it's just them talking before the, the villains arrive to fight them. And yeah, that that definitely goes on longer. Honestly, I think how the original cut got it right with that. I I can understand why we they would include more of it, but uh, I don't know. I can understand why I got cut. Like these extended things, especially when they start talking about villains and all that, and you know, there's a bit. I just feel like that kind of dragged on a little bit, honestly. And we do see a few other scenes, like in the battles and all that, like Sam Man, you know, um, growing larger and some other things as well. Um, but that's really about it in terms of the main film. But then we get to the new post credit scene, which basically is Betty Brant wrapping up um, Midtown, Midtown High's um, year with um, one final news report. Uh, for the school news and they show highlights of the previous film with all the other actors minus Tom Holland who's now been minus Peter Parker aka Tom Peter Park, Parker who's now been who's now whose marriage been now wiped from existence well from everyone that he knows though there is one moment when they're in one photo when they're in Venice that that show actually does show P Peter's body but his face is you know blurred out is is black uh, well there's there's no face I should say so it is intriguing but honestly I think that was obviously this replaced the Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness trailer that came with the original the original cut and eh, honestly I think this was a really good idea for for a new post grad scene because not a lot of these characters from this trilogy this MCU trilogy of Spider-Man probably won't come back for the other sequels I mean oh obviously we're gonna see a few come back here I mean, uh, it's pretty much Zen. They pretty. I think Sony and, Mar and, and Marvel Studios have pretty much confirmed that Zendaya still has a will still be a part of their plans for Spider-Man as MJ. Um, not sure if Ned Leeds will come back. Whether he will become Hobgoblin like he does in the comics, but you never know. Uh, Betty Bryant maybe, considering she does work for the Daily Butte for the Daily Bugle and all that, and works for J.J. and Jameson. So I can't see her coming back, but I don't see like so Flash Thompson and Peter's teachers coming back at any point. Um, you know, uh, j just saying. Um, now that's really about it in terms of the, of the new stuff they added in. And out of everything, I wish they, of the new stuff, I'm glad they added in. I'm... I'm glad we finally got to see the Harry Holland scene and and a bit of um bit of context as to how Happy finds out about the villains in his condo and um, figuring out you know how one of the Daily Bugle uh, web series um, things ends up is actually part of the of the film you know that was good but stuff like the Midtown High and the and uh, of course the the Peter, the three Peters talking to each other. I could see why they got cut. 
but yeah, that's really about it. It still doesn't change Spider Man No Way Home for me. It's still a great film, and still keep my 9.5 out of 10 hat stars ranking. I'm not changing that. But there is one more thing I want to talk about, and I know I shouldn't really say it because this is basically spoilers to She Hulk, which hasn't yet wrapped up yet, but I do want to talk about it because this basically confirms a, fa a theory. Well, it basically refers to a theory that people might. That could basically, you know, sum up as to how Peter, how Spider-Man will show up in the, in future MCU projects. So, if you can recall, when when Doctor Strange can, is about to cast the first spell to wipe everyone's memory of Peter Parker being Spider-Man, before he leaves the Sanctum Sanctorum and goes back to Comatage, Wong tells Strange to leave him out of out of it. People thought that just meant that you know he doesn't want any more knowledge of the of what's going to happen, but I was interpreting thinking that P, that he asked Strange not to have his memory wiped of who that Peter Parker is Spider Man, and now, but that was the original spell, so we didn't know. But of course, when they had to do the spell again, they had to wipe Peter Parker. No one, they Strange had to create do a spell where Peter Parker erased everyone's memory of Peter Parker but only kept Spider-Man which is basically how you know the scene where was Strange and Wong are talking to America Chavez and talking about their previous experience with Spider-Man in the multiverse in Multiverse Madness they never mention Parker's name which yeah that's which you know does make sense but people are now thinking that Wong actually that Strange kept his original promise to Wong and not didn't wipe his memory of Peter Parker being Spider-Man. And there is a scene in She-Hulk where Wong, in episode 3, where Wong men mentions to She-Hulk not to wipe, that he doesn't want to do any more um, memory erasing spells compared to how things got crazy in the last time. How would Wong know that if, if he didn't know that Peter Parker if he didn't know who Spider-Man was and what exactly happened at the end of, of this of No Way Home, unless he actually does know that Strange wiped everyone's mem everyone's memory of Peter Parker, this that scene in She-Hulk basically confirms that Wong basically confirms now that Wong actually knows who Pete, that Peter Parker is Spider-Man, which basically can mean. That this is how Spider Man's going to show up in the likes of Avengers, the King Dynasty, and Secret Wars. Because Wong's the one who would know. Because Wong will be able to contact him and find him to bring him into the upcoming battle. It seems like Wong actually is going to be the main source of bringing the heroes together, considering how, much, how many projects he's been in as of late outside of the Doctor Strange movie. As I said, he wasn't. He, he's in No Way Home. He's in. He was in. He's in She Hulk. He's in, and he also appeared in Shang-Chi last year, so he's going to be pretty much bringing a lot of these heroes in to face um, um to face the likes of Kang when he starts his attack on the multiverse. I wouldn't be surprised if Wong actually eventually shows up in Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantum Mania next year, so just because, you know, they're going to face Kang. And, you know, eventually, maybe at the end of Loki Season 2, Wong, Loki talks to Wong, so... You know, just saying. But you, you never know. You never know. Um, but that's really about it. Um, as I said, uh, still the same movie. Still love No Way Home. Um, please, I saw this uh, this new the, the more fun stuff, the more fun stuff edition. Um, not sure if I'll see it again. Um, if it if it gets re released, you know, on the Blu-ray or. Whatever. I'm glad I saw what I saw, you know. Uh, and it still does, doesn't change my original opinion. Which is good. So what's next? I will, well, I will get back to reviews. Whether or not it's movies, uh, it's debatable. I'm not going to review She-Hulk till after that, after the show wraps up. And, uh, well, we'll just have to wait and see. And I'm... Um, Oh, I hope there's no <laughs> nothing else like that post credit scene episode three shows up. Oh, oh. oh. oh I'll talk about that when we get to it. But you know, in the meantime, I'll, 
This is Hassa from Hassa Reviews Out, and I shall see you for my next video. Ciao!